Hey man, I'm Derek Gordon, and it's that Midnight Hustle. I think it's like episode 11. And um, I'm back at it, man. What are we watching now? Let, let's peep this out. I, I So just, just to give you a heads up of where I'm at before I hit record, I'm trying to figure out some flicks that I want to see again. I'm looking through these trailers. And um, I remember that on my Amazon Prime, I got like a watch list. Now, yo, shout out to Amazon Prime. Yo, they... I, I remember when I was a kid, I used to go to the video stores. And I used to go looking for obscure shit, like like horror movies, action movies. That's why I got like so in, into those old school films from the '80s and the '70s. And um, I used to sit there and read the boxes and stare at the artwork, like oh, because it was like, yo, th- this is me getting up close and personal with that particular film without uh, committing to it. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I don't know if I want to rent this right now or buy it for that matter. And then you're like, hmm. Uh, hmm, huh, maybe next time, or, or whenever they got the rent to get one free day, I'll, I'll take this one out, so, anyway, long story short is that I get onto Amazon Prime, and I feel like you got those fucking movies on there, man, I get really excited, because I'm like, oh, shit, I, like, HBO don't want that, they're like, um, you know what, I'm good on the license, I don't, nobody's gonna watch it, we're like, yo, you can put that on, like, 4 o'clock in the morning, the only people who are up are, like, cokeheads, and, and like, nah, nah, I'm good, like, give it to Amazon Prime, they, they need content, but in this case, um, I like that kind of content, probably because as a kid, I used to stay up all fucking hours of the night, and, and just watch everything that was on TV, and memorize, like, late night TV, like, like, from talk shows, all the way down to the infomercials, to the honeymooner, fucking reruns, and, 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 and the Jeffersons, and all that other cool shit, man. Um, so I'm a late night dude, and I guess that's why they call this the Midnight Hustle. I guess nothing's fucking changed. <laughs> all right, but here's the deal: fucking Amazon Prime. They have all those movies, man. They're all there. Or well, not all of them, but if you think of some like shitty, shitty movie, like Yo Slumber Party Massacre, that's on there. Um, uh, Prom Night with Jamie Lee Curtis, it's on there. Uh, all the Chuck Norris movies, it's on there. As a matter of fact, yo. You want to check out some Chuck Norris movies? Because <laughs> before I hit the record button, I'm like, oh, man, Chuck Norris, Charles Bronson. Chuck Norris, Charles Bronson. And, yo, I was leaning hard on Charles Bronson. I'm like, mm, 10 to Midnight, The Evil That Men Do. Oh, man, obviously the Death Wish movies. Mm, Charlie Bright. And then I, then I fucking hit record. And here I am talking Chuck Norris. So I'm, we're going to do the Chuck Norris rabbit hole right now. Let's go find some trailers. On Amazon Prime. Here it goes. Here it goes. Bam. It's always a nice way to start a trailer. The best. You do things Got that nice style. Ralph Lauren polo. Fucking button JJ down. McQuaid tucked into his tight jeans. The best. Goddamn right he is. It's Chuck fucking Norris, man. He's a lone wolf lawman in the Lone Star State. This shit looking like Tatooine. <laughs> <laughs> on the next episode of The Mandalorian. <laughs> Always fucking up somebody's barbecue. Ugh. Make it out of the mud like that. Yeah, bad motherfucker. No shirt on. <laughs> He's doing like the sexy, the sexy sheriff calendar. Roll, roll in the mud. Roll. No shirt on. <laughs> we gonna get. We gonna fuck with that one later. <laughs> oh, David Carradine. Is he killed, Bill? Best can't always do it alone. Oh man. You're fucking around with the maid. Oh, that's enough. No hurt him no more. I got baby with him. Why, why, if I'm thinking, why is this, uh, I don't know, I sound like Mario Kart's maid. I think you know Agent Jackson. Of course, there's an Agent Jackson in this movie. Oh. So do I. The wolf. The wolf. The wolf oh, the wolf pack. <laughs> and this is the origins of the hangover. The fucking wolf pack. <laughs> Yo, the black guy is definitely Bradley Cooper. Because he's the coolest one in this fucking movie. Now you're arguing. You're like, Bradley Cooper would definitely be Chuck Norris because he's the leader of the wolf pack. But, I don't know, work with me on this one. Nah, you know, you're right. Yeah, yeah. He would definitely, look at that. (laughs) With his fucking bandana on. And his sleeveless vest. Army vest. (laughs) Then David Carradine over here trying to steal the shit. With his fucking plaid, long sleeve sweater. (laughs) And his communion necklace. (laughs) 
and Leon Isaac Kennedy. <laughs> no, who's LQ Jones? How come you didn't say LQ Jones? <laughs> like, yo, nobody fucking knows LQ Jones. <laughs> yo, I don't know, man. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I think we have a fucking blast doing Lone Wolf McQuaid. That shit looked bananas. <laughs> I want to watch it again, though. Because my first reaction... A little fucked up. I want to go frame by frame. Make sure that I'm not missing anything. You know, maybe there's some Marvel Easter eggs in there or something. All right, so let's let's check this shit out one more time. Hang out because now I'm telling you. Now I definitely want to see more Chuck Norris movies. <laughs> yo, if they get, if they promise to be that fucking good, sign me up. That yo, I will I will make believe I have COVID for the weekend. So my wife, let me just watch Chuck Norris movies all weekend long. If they are as good as that, so let me go back and check out this trailer one more time. <laughs> When you're the best, you do things with style. Yo, first off, hold up, put that shit on pause. Yo, that gunshot, that pew, that shit, you know what they were doing right there, right? Get Just take a quick look, watch. What, what, what do you think? Oh, yeah, give me it right here. Boom. Oh, shit, when big ass best, magnum? <gasps> you do things Yo, with style. who that? And so before the reveal, before before they got the chin shot and they showed the beard, because you know Clint Eastwood ain't rocking that beard, they were trying to make this like a dirty harry movie get people hyped up like oh shit yo dirty harry's back dirty harry's back he shot through the screen first and now he fucking yo you know who's got a gun like that only that's dirty harry's that's a 357 magnum that's a fucking dirty harry magnum that's what that shit is and then it starts panning up right because you think that you're about to see a new fucking dirty harry movie and then you see the beard like whoa what the fuck hey clint eastwood don't wear no fucking beard Maybe something happened because you also don't wear these fucking Ralph Lauren polo pink shirts. When you're the They're best. selling you Dirty Harry here, but Dad, Dirty Harry wouldn't style. wear that fucking belt buckle or that denim pants. JJ McQuaid is the best. JJ McQuaid is the best. Yo, imagine directing that scene. JJ, you do. Yo, here's best. what we're gonna do, Chuck. Chuck. All right. We're when gonna pan up best. slow. We're gonna pan up real slow. We're gonna start at your dick. All right. Well, because we just. And then you have the Magnum. You see what we're trying to do there? You got the Magnum dick, the 357 dick, the big banger right there. So we're going to start right there. Aiming cheap because you're wearing the tight Jordash pants. So why, why let that go to waste? We're going to pan up. You're going to have the little fucking belt to the side looking like Han Solo action with the holster. Pan up. I was like, oh, damn, look at this dude with the fucking Ralph Lauren pink button-down shirt tucked into those tight-ass fucking pants. I guess they're doing this to fucking get people to, to, to bring their wives. Maybe the wives are like, oh, my God. We'll see that new Chuck Norris movie, uh. and then they they were like, "Yo, why? How come you like Chuck Norris? You want to go see an action movie?" She's like, "Yo, he looks so good in them Jordan ass jeans. I can see him kick ass. He, yo, he can do a fucking flying drop kick, and he don't rip his pants or nothing." I'm like, "Hmm." So you got to think for Chuck Norris. Fuck that. We ain't seeing this movie now. <laughs> I don't need you over there fucking fantasizing about Chuck Norris. I'm over there like, yeah, beat his ass, kick his ass, go kick him in the neck, and then all of a sudden you're gonna fucking you're gonna be over here creaming on yourself over fucking Chuck Norris. Get the fuck out of here. And then, so they try to advertise this to women, and they notice when this movie didn't make a return in the box, I was like, yo, fuck that shit. No more let that cute shit, Chuck Norris. No more rolling in the dirt. No more tank tops. No, no more sleeveless jackets. You're going to look like fucking somebody's dad who just don't have us no karate. All right, hold on. Then they pan up. They're like, yo, Chuck, just stand there. Stand there, Chuck. And they start panning. They pan up real slow. Like, yo, Chuck. All right, so when the camera gets about here, that's when you reach for the hat. Then we're going to start to pull back a little bit. And after we pull back... Boom, you put the hat on your head and you just stay there squinting your eyes. What am I squinting at? Exactly. Nobody fucking knows. You're Chuck fucking Norris. You squint whatever the fuck you want to squint that motherfucker. You do things with Here we style. go. Yeah, now put it on slow, Chuck. There you go. Squint. Look, we're going to give you that shot there. Hold it. You were supposed to hold it for the trailer. He's a lone wolf lawman. The lone wolf. Fighting in the fucking desert. That's my jurisdiction too. Um, Where's the town, lone wolf McQuaid? Well, I fucking I'm in the, I'm in the desert like Wally Coyote, and I'm going after that fucking Roadrunner. And he got the fucking Tusken Raiders up there. <laughs> Was this before or after Star Wars? Because this seems very Tatooine. Like we said before, this looked like an episode of The Mandalorian. Like John Favreau was like, "Yo, um, this episode you ever seen Lone, Lone Wolf McQuaid? You seen that one? Good fucking movie, right? Yeah, yeah. Just rip that shit out, take their names off, and throw the Star Wars names in, and call it a day." Boom, episode 7, Mandalorian, in the can. Anyway, uh, yeah, it does look like uh, very much like Tatooine. Yeah, look. <laughs> There's some bad motherfuckers in this movie. Your record is unrivaled. 
my- All right, so let me let me let me get a look at Chuck over here. Chuck's in there with the fucking headband. So shout out to Chuck because that headband, Lone Wolf McQuaid, came out long before Rambo did. So he was over here rocking the headband, the the red gear, and then he's got like the ripped up military jacket, with, still wearing the Ralph Lauren button down, but a different color now. This looks like an off white eggshell color. But anyway. So he's chilling it, yo, and his hair is done real nice. He he looked like he was um, in the coal mine or something like that. But either way, and he's fucking. Anyway, this is your undercover cop. This is your undercover sheriff. He's not even a cop. He's not on the streets. He's not like you know getting drug dealers in the park. I don't even know who the fuck he's getting in this movie. I don't know what the bad guy does. All I know is that's the worst undercover fucking outfit that that a lawman could ever wear. So lone wolf, McCoy. but it works for this movie. And you know what makes it cool? Chuck fucking Norris, man. Chuck Norris. Come on, man. Give that man some respect. He's the only who can pull off that outfit. He went to wardrobe, and they were like, hey, Chuck, we got this. No, 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 no. No, no, Give me the boots. The, the, the Jordash. Two sizes too small. That fucking headband. Wrap that up. I need that. You gotta Give me two of them. And um, see that, that, that army jacket over there? I love it. It's great. It's gritty, but rip the fucking sleeves off. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hey, don't forget the Ralph Lauren button-down polo over there. Thank you. All right, back to this. That kind of ranger is, uh, <laughs> 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 Yo, in what fucking, again, I mean, I've never been, I've never been, like, on a ride-along with, with a cop car, but at what point of your day, in, in your cop duties, do you fucking have to go and jump on top of a car like this? Like, has that ever happened before? Like, it's the runaway car, he, he only got caught in the pit, in the Ford F-150, he was like, ah, oh, I'm in the hatchback, you thought you fucking ran me over, but I'm right here, and then he goes to climb on the top. I don't see these cops in Tampa doing that shit at all. So maybe it's easy to get away with things out here. If you're listening for this, try it. Try it. And until the motherfucker decides to jump on the top of the squad car and chase you and then jump from his car into your flat back of your F-150 and then try to climb through the driver window, then he's not doing no cop duty. Then he fucking gave up. Yeah, no, bitch, better yet, you gave up too easy. You just, they were like, woo, with the fucking lights and the sirens, and you pulled over, you made shit too easy. So... I don't know what to tell you. I'm just, I'm just saying, maybe the cops want to challenge. You know, maybe they see movies like this and they're like, yo, that's exactly why I want to be a cop. I want to do that kind of cop shit. And you out here just fucking, they fucking, they do the thing with the lights and the horn. And woo! And you fucking look, oh, shit, the cops. And you slow down and pull over. Like, oh, come on, man. Yeah, and they're fucking disappointed. Like, come on, dude. Fucking a little bit of a car chase. You know, just go down. Maybe it's like you didn't see me or, or maybe, maybe you got some warrants. But fuck it. Come on, dude. Shit, I didn't sign up for this. That's why they go home and they beat their wives. Because they're like, yo, I was fucking amped up. I thought it was going to be a fucking cop day, like lethal weapon. And then, yeah, yeah, I gave out like three tickets. I fucking sat over there. They put me, me to a construction site. No fucking action. And she says some shit. And he's like, ah, oh, why's my fucking meatloaf cold? And then, then shit ensues. And that's how fucking dudes just go off because they're fucking monsters, you pieces of shit. Don't ever fucking hit a woman. That's not cool at all. All right. They're always fucking up a barbecue, right? That's like ECW. In fucking ECW, they're like, yo, there's always gonna be a BAM! Right right in the fucking, right in the, in the salad. BRAH! Fucked it up. The fruit table. BROOM! And then, yo, and then back to back, because there are two tables. One's a, one's, a, one's a barbecue table shot, and then you got the fucking pool table. So you know he's like, yo, he's fighting the bar. He probably just kicked this one dude. Look at them, them guys in the back. They're like, yo, shit. These guys right back there. Hold on, wait. I gotta, that shit happened so fast. Hang on, here it comes, here it comes. Boom. All right, these two dudes back there. Look, the fucking, uh, it looked like Oscar Gamble, the New York Yankees, back in like 78. And then this guy over here, fucking Cato Kalin. And they still like, oh, shit, yo. You, you think we next? <laughs> he kicked this dude right in the face, stump man. That looked like Bobcat Goldthwait taking the fucking bump on the on, on the table. And all to impress the fucking girl back here that's just like she's from Little House on a Prairie. Look at this shit. This gotta be the fucking final shot. These two making out in the mud. These nasty motherfuckers. Yo, let me tell you something about a girl who, who fucking make out with you in the mud. All right? She makes out with you in the mud like this. She is down for some dirty shit. All right? She is down to fucking get. You can do the net, the shit you see on Pornhub. You're like, what the fuck? And you're like, oh, they're just getting paid. Nah, dude, there are chicks out there that they don't want to be fucking nasty. They don't want their daddy to see them on the hook. Because then you know some daddies, you know all daddies are fucking nasty. They're like, yo. And so, and then they see, oh, shit, is that my fucking little girl? And they lose their shit. Yeah, so they just they live out their fantasies with these fucking dudes. And so if you see a chick that's willing to do that in the mud, she willing to fucking do some nasty like you can 
probably fart in her mouth or something like that. That'd be disgusting. Be like, yo, baby, yo, let me tongue punch your fart box. And then she'd be like, oh, yeah, that sounds so fucking hot. And I'd be like, ugh, 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 ugh. Yo, and then where are they leaving us to assume that this scene ended up going? Like, like what the fuck? Like, yo, they made out. But for how long? Like, did, did he, like, slide fingers in there? Did, like, did they take it off? Did she, like, giving him the top over there? Yo, like, wash that shit up. Take that somewhere else to the hotel. Wherever. Look at these dudes getting their ass kicked. All right, help me out here. Look at this fucking dude. Like, yo, Chuck, man, we're gonna try to appeal to the ladies. We're gonna have these shots of you and your tight ass Jordash, right? Yo, no, you, no, no, Chuck, no, you don't need the fucking button down Ralph Lauren polo. You put that away. It's gonna be better. It's gonna sell the movie to the ladies. You can go out there with your 357 Magnum. We're gonna get you all oiled up. And yo, can we get somebody to blow out his hair, please? Blow out his fucking hair. He's gotta look and do something with the beard. Trim up the beard. No, no, he said leave the beard. Alright, leave the beard. Yeah, yeah he, he looks like a little bit like Teen Wolf, but it's okay. That's fucking that's that he's Chuck fucking Norris. He could pull off the Teen Wolf look. And then they're like, yo, these are gonna be these shots. I want you bang, bang, bang. Yo, think of it like 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 we're making like that fucking Chippendales fucking fireman calendar and you're all 12 months so you fucking give me the poses like bam hold out that 357 do some other shit right make it look tough like pop pop which gets you like the wide shot you take it out of fucking scarecrow Bam, right through the thing yeah whip it around real quick that rolling dirt there you go lone and then we like the lone wolf mcquade 2021 to 2022 <laughs> 12 months of chuck norris action get your calendars now you horny bitches but anyway even a wolf has his weaknesses. <laughs> Yo, why they put like like the fucking Puerto Rican version of uh, Margot Kidder over here? <laughs> it was like, yo, is, is that fucking Latina Margot Kidder, Lois Lane from Superman? But yo, she look hot. But it's like, why like, yo, man got his weakness. Like he goes over there. Yo, he can save the town. He can fight 500 people. He knows fucking karate. He wears the headband. He kicks ass, man. He did the fucking, the, 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 the judo kung fu Kung Fung Pui calendar shit that he just did with no shirt on and shit like that. But you know what his one weakness is? You know what his fucking cryptic nice is? Pussy. Pussy. That's all it is. Just fucking pussy. Don't get me wrong. She's fucking cute. But weakness? Come on, man. What? Oh, you know what it probably is? Come on. Think movie, Derek. He is fucking this chick. And she is probably the girlfriend to the bad dude in town. Oh, oh. What does it sound like? Roadhouse. Bam, that's what it is. This is fucking Roadhouse. She's the nurse, but she's probably illegal. So she, so in this kind of movie, and it's the 70s, so they don't give a fuck about racism. She's probably the maid, and, and the, the fucking drug dealer is fucking the maid. And then she's like, oh, no, I want to get out of here. I need help. But, you know, I need also need citizenship. And then she don't help me. He abuses me, too. He beats me. And then he, and Chuck Norris is like, no, don't worry. I'll take care of you. I'm going to fuck him up. Let him do that shit again. You come to me, and I'm going to fuck him up. I'm going to get you out of here, when I'm, you know, because I know karate. And I'm fucking Chuck Norris. So... It, that's that's probably the the, the storyline here. Of course, he's he's Lone Wolf McQuaid. He's a cop, you know, undercover with the worst fucking outfit ever, and he is trying to um, he is trying to infiltrate this fucking scenario. So let's keep going. Oh, she got a mean right hand. Oh yeah, look at that. Chuck getting it. Chuck getting it. Did they go out to the club? She he fucking over here dressed like Walker Texas Texas Ranger. And she dressed like a fucking alien, like an astronaut, looking like fucking Max Moon over here. <laughs> like, um, do you have any wardrobe from Flash Gordon left over? I will take that. <laughs> <laughs> and I love how they're like, yo, that's his weakness. The next two shots is him fucking getting some cheeks and showing that she got a mean right hook. And a powerful enemy. <laughs> yo, how you going to say powerful enemy when he could barely get his fucking leg up? Look at that. Look at this kick. This horrible kick. Sorry, David Carradine, but yo. Oh, fuck. Ooh. God damn, it took everything out of me. Oh, shit. Oh, very powerful when I was about 30 years ago. <laughs> yo, whoever pays for this shit? Boom. You see that? That's like private property, not David Carradine. He paid for himself. Right here. When cops do that shit, you, you fucking you're like, yo, they broke my fucking gate again. God damn it. It's fucking assholes. Yeah, I get it. You're chasing the bad guy. But who's going to pay for my fucking gate? You send a bill to the city and you got to chase them down for like 11 years and they never fucking pay. Oh. Bam. They fuck your gate. I love the fights in the alley. Guys just happen to have a baseball bat. <laughs> you ever notice? Yo, check this out. Boom. 
three, and next. No, okay, let's do it again. One, two, three. They always come like in order. Like you're one, you're two, you're three. They never gang up. Yo, if this were in Brooklyn, that's how you know wherever the Lone Wolf McQuaid is fucking doing this shit. It's it's ass over there. Like like they're just a bunk, bunch of punk bitches because in Brooklyn they don't go. Okay, you go first. He missed. All right, I'll go. No, you want to go? Right, fuck it, you go. I'll go next. You get them, and then I'll jump in. And, and then you go after me, okay? So you keep fucking watching over here. And then, you know, they, they just like, it's like you'll pick, it's like being in a fucking deli, and you got to go pick your number. Like, oh, what, what number did you get? Oh, all right. So are you going to punch or you going to kick? I was thinking about fucking, I got this, like, this, this fucking beer bottle over here. I was going to crack it and try to take a swing at him, or maybe break it over his head. What you got? Oh, you don't have a weapon? So you just going to throw some kicks? All right, um... Why don't you go first? Because if I end up killing him with the glass bottle, then you won't get your shot in. So, so you go first, and then I'll go after you. All right, cool. So anyway, but it, that's how it fucking works. I don't even know where the fuck I was going with that. But <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Wait a minute, David Carradine, the big baddie over here. We we saw that earlier. Give me your fucking badge. You know, lawmaker here. I'm the fucking law better, puto peso. <laughs> Give me that fucking badge. It's my souvenir. Ah, oh, yes, I'm going to remember you. Ah, I remember I killed a fucking cop. You motherfucker. Ah, oh, yes, I killed Chuck Norris. This is my fucking proof. Need your new partner. It's gonna be an honor working with you, Ranger McQuaid. <laughs> They're like, yo. <laughs> He's the only fucking dude. Everybody else over here dressed in fucking suits. This dude is wearing a belt of bullets. <laughs> Uh, um, hey, McQuaid, um, we gotta talk to you about the dress code. Do you mind coming in here? Yeah, we got the chief of police, we've got, uh, human resources here, and, uh, <laughs> there have been complaints on the floor. Uh, they feel like your, your attire, your work attire is very aggressive. <laughs> if you wouldn't mind, Chuck, um, I'm sorry, Lone Wolf, if you wouldn't mind, please, if, please um, can, can you find something else to carry your bullets in and maybe not expose, maybe t- take your shirt out of your pants. Although it's unprofessional, it's better than seeing the fucking bullets. You know Agent Jackson? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, listen. Shout out to my dude. I guarantee you that's LQ Jones because they never mentioned his name at the fucking end of the credits, which is fucked up. They're like, he's a black guy. Nobody's going to fucking know. I'm like, really? Are you seriously? Like, but shout out to you because you got that role. When they were like, yo, the movie's way too white. Yo, we need to talk him black, dude. We need somebody. Cheap though, because you know it's gonna be a small role, and you know he can say, "Oh, look me, I was, I was." Hey, let me remind you, hello, wake up. This is the '70s when Hollywood was wild racist. I'm not saying they're not now; they are now. But then they got to put out like a whole fucking press release and apology tour about everything, all the shit they said. They're still fucking racist. This is in the '70s when they were openly racist. Like, hey, it don't fucking matter. You can do this. They ain't no, it's just the black guy in the fucking movie, and, and the black guy's like. Yo, you know what? Fuck this. I'm going to take this job. I'm going to do my fucking best, all right? And then I'm going to get another fucking job. And they're like, hey, you see my last movie? Like, what movie are you in? Like, I was fucking kicking ass next to Chuck Norris. Like, bullshit. Like, bullshit. You ever seen Lone Wolf McQuaid? Like, oh, shit. You was Agent Jackson. Why do I sound like I'm talking to only brothers in the hood? Is it Because... Technically, that's where I'm from, and that's the fucking way to do it. Like, yo, for real? And then you say, yo, 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 come over here. Yo! Yo, Dookie, come over here. Yo, guess who this is? That's the shit that happens. And the whole fucking neighborhood comes over, and then you're like, oh, then you gotta start taking pictures and autographs and all this other shit. Because some people and grew up where, where I grew up, there was like fucking Omar Epps grew up over there, and Dougie Fresh, and a bunch of people that you probably never fucking heard of. Um, some celebrities just come through and fuck the chicks in that neighborhood. <laughs> I'll tell you that, too. <laughs> Anyway, so shout out to Agent Jackson because you know what? He's pulling the fucking roll. Then you need to talk him like, yo, you know what? I'll do it. Where's the fucking check? And I'm going to be on screen fighting with this motherfucker. Me and Chuck Norris, we're going to share scenes together. I'm going to do lines, not cocaine lines, Chuck. Chill out. I'm going to do lines with Chuck Norris. I got a scene with Chuck Norris. Fuck it. And I'm getting paid? Yep, sign me up. And that's the fucking same exact thing I would have done. So shout out to you. I think you're LQ Jones. I don't know, and I'm not going to look it up. But yo, shout out to you. Because before there was Wesley Snipes and there was, there was fucking, you know, all, all the black actors out there today in the leading roles, you was taking the fucking leading role, all right? You scored it. You were better than all the other ones. And you got the fucking chance to work with mainstream star Rub Elbows. Now, I don't know what you did with your, with, with your career afterwards. So, you know, you blame your agent for that. Also blame Hollywood. They were fucking wild racist back then, man. That was some straight up bullshit. Looks like somebody doesn't like you, McQuaid. <laughs> 
<laughs> Lone Wolf McQuaid. Well, why? First of all, I know he's not living there, but that, that's got to be like what the Louisiana hood, like like what is it, the the District Nine of 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 fucking Louisiana, whatever they call it, the Lower Ninth. And then, but now, but of course, now Sergeant Jackson is like, yo. I'm going to fix you, man. It's, it's almost like that that Rocky and Apollo moment where he's like, yo, you ain't got the eye of the tiger, McQuaid. But you know what? Fuck tigers. You a lone wolf. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, yeah. And I'm Chuck motherfucking Norris. I make a few enemies here and there. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of beer are you drinking, Chuck? That looks like some, that is not Stella Arturo in a can or whatever they fucking call it. That is some cheap shit. That is in the world of Quentin Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez. That would be piss warm chango. No oh, shit. So now the wolf. Oh wait a minute. Wolf pack. The wolf pack. Yo, hold the fuck up. Wait, who is the other dude in the wolf pack? Clearly you got Chuck Norris. As a wolf pack. You got Agent Johnson. And then who the fuck is this guy? Who is this dude? Is he Asian? He looked like Jackie Chan. But no, Jackie Chan would have had a bigger role. Is he? No, he's Latino. He's Latino. But yo, and yo. <laughs> I love how this dude would go on. He said, yo, fuck that. I'm going to fight with. I'm, I'm going out here and I'm going to fight with fucking Chuck Norris. I'm getting my fucking bazooka. Yo, get my fucking bazooka, Holmes. He gets the fucking bazooka. He's like, man, I'm going to be on TV, right? Yo, let me get that camouflage hat. Let me put that shit on. Yo, for the record, for the record, his little wolf pack over there, where the fuck they go? These motherfuckers? Yo, they would have kicked his fucking ass. Ain't no dude that would, no way, that's fucking white dude would be like, yo, I got the Latino dude, then I got the, bro. first of all, brother's gonna beat his ass. Latino's gonna be like, yo, let me get some kicks. Let me get some kicks. Yeah, yo, mira, oye, hey, yo, let me get some kicks. Come on, yo, okay, 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 my turn, my turn. Yo, the shootout, that shootout looks like the scenes from Commando. When Commando gets to the island and he takes out the whole fucking island by himself. It looks like the same set. Maybe it's the same actors. Look at this. Look, look at that wall. They fucking, I see Arnold was running across that wall. Maybe not because I think that was, that was in the mansion. It looks the same. When, when he got to the beach, look at this fucking dude. Yo, you're going to work that big ass machine gun. That big Rambo machine gun. That fucking helicopter machine gun in that cool ass sweater, right? Look at you with your gold watch. <laughs> like, I don't give a fuck. I got so much money. I can get another gold watch. This is the gold watch I played in. This is, this is my play watch, man. I don't give a fuck if it breaks. I got like 1,000 of them. It's fucking, I don't care. And he's got the cool sweater on. And he's like, yo, look at me in my sweater, Holmes. Look at me. I look fucking good. Even if I'm going to fight, I'm going to look good. I fight good in my good sweater. I don't give a fuck, man. And look at his chain. Because you know, yo, if this were the hood, the first thing that happens in the fucking hood, they pop the chain. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even swing for the face. Like they'll try to swing for the face, and if they miss, they'll fucking they'll take the the weak arm because they, obviously they're gonna swing with with the haymaker first, and they come off with a haymaker, whoo, and then they miss. Like oh shit, they fucking try to go grab for this, but they grab the chain because you know in a fight, if you pop somebody's jewelry off, it fucks with their head. They're like because that chain might mean something important to them, and the chain fucking pops, and they're like oh shit, oh. Oh shit, oh shit, that's my grandmother's chain. Oh shit. And it takes their eye off the fight. And then you beat the shit out of that point. Like, motherfucker, you ain't got shit now, motherfucker. Now what? Yeah, go look for your chain. And you start kicking them on that day. I'm like, yo. And they're like, chill, 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 man, chill. That chain means a lot to me. Hold on, hold on. I'll fight you when I find the chain. Yo, chill. <laughs> so if you have in a fight, pop somebody's jewelry. Like, like break their watch, rip their fucking earring out or something like that. Definitely pop their chain. When you pop their chain, they lose their shit. They're like, they get into panic. And they're like, oh shit, my chain. Where to go? Where to go? And it's sliding down my fucking pants. Oh shit, I'm not wearing a belt. God damn. Fuck, shake it around your ankles. God damn, it's in my underwear. And they do all that kind of shit. And it's like, fuck. Yeah. So it's a distraction. If you're in a fight, pop a chain. Like this motherfucker definitely would have popped his chain. And then I would have fucking dragged him through the mud in his fucking, in his pretty sweater. And then kicked him in the teeth and then popped his watch. I would have stomped on his watch while it was still on his wrist. And then, um, then there's that machine gun. I, well, I could have just shot him with the f- fucking machine gun. I don't know. Whatever. Keep going. <laughs> Chuck Norris coming out. <laughs> All right. Listen, Action Jackson. I got this great spot for you, Action Jackson. <laughs> We want to make you look cool, right? Listen, you want to be the next Billy D. Williams, right? Don't you, Action Jackson? All right, so listen. When I call action, not Action Jackson. When I say, you know, lights, camera, action. Although we're not using lights, camera, because it's a fucking daylight scene. Listen, just fucking focus on me, fucking Jackson. Here's what you're going to do. I call action. You're going to fucking take a dive over that crate. 
and then you're gonna land, you're gonna tuck and roll, and you're gonna fucking grab your gun and look somewhere, don't matter where. Probably in the direction where you dove from, you were running from some shit. And I'm gonna actually, that's gonna be your shot for the trailer. You ready? You ready? You got this. Action. <laughs> what the fuck was that? What the fuck was that? I fucking give you your moment, I give you a fucking moment, and what do you do? You fucking throw a limp ass grenade. What the? Who the fuck taught you to throw? God damn it. I thought you were like an avid. Where'd you get those fucking muscles? It sure as fuck wasn't from throwing. What kind of fucking throw is that, you stupid motherfucker? Holy shit. That's the best you could do? That's the best you could do. God damn it. And throwing like that, you know you're going to hit the ceiling. What's going to happen? It's going to fucking come down and blow up right in your fucking face. You idiot. You know what? Fuck that. This is the end of your career. We should have never cast your dumb ass. Holy shit, Chuck, no, no wonder Chuck Norris taught him how to throw like that. What the fuck? All right, now I get, listen, I've never been to the military, so I can't tell you how to properly throw a grenade. If I had a fucking grenade, I would throw it like a fastball, like a Roger Clemens fast, like a Dwight Gooden. I would fucking grip that shit, probably split my two fingers like this, right? I'd try to find the seams on the grenade, and I would try to fucking split my fingers like this, and then put my, my thumb... In an area where it almost looks like a curve, but it's not going to be a curve because remember my fingers are split. And then I throw the fucking grenade. By that time, the fucking grenade would have blown up in my hand and I wouldn't be talking about these fingers because they wouldn't fucking exist anymore. But anyway, you also don't throw a fucking, you don't, you don't throw a grenade like, like, like a football. It's not a quarterback and you're not fucking doing some Kobe shots like Kobe and fade away with a fucking grenade. You're not doing that. So there's got to be a way. I think the baseball way, because the baseball is pretty much the size of a fucking grenade, I think the baseball way is probably the best way to do it. I guess military people tell me you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You do it from back here because you've got to throw long distance, and it's the trajectory of your throw, and you're fucking launching the goddamn thing. Then that's why you're throwing like that, and then maybe Chuck Norris is just a bad motherfucker doing the right thing because he was taught by the real military, and then he taught the black dude how to do it, and I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Back to the goddamn trailer. Yo. Oh. <laughs> I thought... Hold the fuck up. I thought Chuck Norris was getting his shit in, right? He was like, yo, peep me out. Look at me. Yo, I'm going to stand here. I'm going to tilt my head a little bit like I'm in a boy band. I'm going to squint my eyes. I'm slowly, slowly going to remove the fucking belt buckle where my gun shit is. Because you know why? Yo, baby, you remember that clip from earlier where you and me were making out in the mud? Shit was like from here to eternity. I'm rolling around the mud. We both dirty. We both mud. We getting our shit in. I'm gonna, this is the fucking scene right before. It's before we get dirty. And I'm taking my shit off. I know there's garbage behind me. That's fine. Because check it out. In front of me? Beaches. Nothing but beaches. I don't know why you would dump all this garbage on the fucking beautiful beach, but whatever, man. Check this out. I'm taking the shit off slow. And I'm thinking this is like, you know, they're trying to like, yo, this is sexy. Fucking, you're going to put this poster like right next to the Farrah Fawcett poster if you share a room with your sister or vice versa. Whatever, man. She's going to get it and put it in your room because you already got the Farrah Fawcett poster. She's getting it. She's like, yo, Chuck Norris, come give me some. Come, come chop me up over here. And then... You fucking watching this movie, and they watching this movie, and they creaming, and they're like, yo, girls, guess what? The oh, nope, Chuck Norris likes men. <laughs> and apparently he has a type. He's got, looks kind of Asian, like Asian Down Syndrome, kind of, and then he's got the fucking, you know, the, the J.C. Penny sweater on, and he's got, nobody popped his chain, so clearly that's why he's still in the fight. Because these stupid motherfuckers were never taught that when you fight in the hood, you pop a motherfucker's chain. And he's over here trying to hand him a, I don't know, that looks like a Xbox controller or something. And um, so, th I don't know what's going to gonna happen. I don't know if this is like, you know, the origins of Brokeback Mountain, why they started that shit. Because Chuck Norris is sexy taking off his fucking fight belt. This dude's like, yo, poppy, I'm wearing my Sunday best over here. Check it out. You want some? Get it behind this tree. And then... I don't know what happens. I don't know. They, they, oh, they fighting. Oh, something happened. He must have come too fast, but whatever. Yo, look at David Carradine fighting in that fucking outfit, man. Shout out to And then, yo, Chuck Norris like, yo, I got the fucking dope outfit, all right? For, for Halloween, children are going to want to dress up like Lone Wolf McQuaid. You get a headband. You get a jacket. You rip the fucking sleeves off. You get these tight, short-ass jeans, right? Okay? And then and then you just roll around in, in your parents' ashtray, okay? Remember, it's the 70s. 
fucking people had ashtrays in the house. They might still do. I don't know. I have no idea because I'm not a smoker. So, but these motherfuckers were just like, yo, just put, take that ashes, put it all over your face and your body. You look just like Lone Wolf McQuaid. You're like, but daddy, I want to be the other guy. Like, they're not going to know who the fuck you are. They're going to think you're a fucking seven-year-old stock investor just with that shitty sweater. And, and I'm not going to, you going to fucking go to Sears and pay for that shit or fucking Alexander's and buy that shit for something you're only going to wear once. Can I wear my chain? Yeah, you can wear your fucking chain. Make sure nobody pops it. Fucking asshole. I'm not buying you another one for breaks. All right, so I need to stop it here because I want to look at Chuck Norris's teeth. But yeah, I think David Carradine's a little fucking overrated. I know he did all the did the he was kung fu, he was Kane and kung fu and all that other shit. And he's over here fighting Chuck Norris. I guess I guess that qualifies you to be a badass because I fought Chuck Norris. I, I'm sure I could fight Chuck Norris. Fucking, you know. You can train a fucking actor. You, you know, you think Keanu Reeves just woke up one day and he could fight like John Wick. That's not how it works. You fucking train to be that fucking character. So I'm sure that David Carradine, who probably has black belts, he probably has black belts. He probably hung himself with a black belt in his closet while he was jerking off and things didn't go to a right. But that's another story. Yeah, I know it's problematic. Whatever. You know, so me, it fucking happened. That's what happened. That's how he died. Don't get fucking offended. Don't get mad if you talk about how the fucking dude died. He fucking died. That's what he did. Get over it. Lone Wolf McQuaid. Lone Wolf McQuaid. Chuck Norris, David Carradine, Barbara Carrera, and Leon Isaac Kennedy. All right. Leon Isaac Kennedy. I'm not saying that sounds like a black name, but I'm sure that is the Billy G. Williams dude here because I still want to know who LQ Jones is. I want to say Robert Beltran is 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 um the Spanish dude because clearly Roberto Beltran or Robert Beltran sounds like sounds like a dude who plays baseball came here from the Dominican Republic you know or Cuba or whatever some shit like that and they were like oh uh, Roberto Beltran right yeah come over here you a switch hitter oh no you got a curveball great come on here's a million dollars um but LQ, all right I want to find out. This is what, Lone Wolf McQuaid? Let's find out what the fuck. What the fuck is this? Uh, trying to spell McQuaid. All right, let's see who. Keep in mind, I have no fucking idea who any of these actors are. See the full cast and crew. All right. But they, there's always a picture, right? Um, uh, Yo, first of all, who is LQ Jones? Let's check that out. And I'll say Roberto Beltran. Leon Isaac, he, obviously the girl is the girl. That makes sense, and we all know shit about David Carradine. All right, LQ Jones. Come on, stupid, load up. Here we go. It is definitely not Mel Gibson. I don't know who the hell you are. You look like some dude. Um, I'm guessing you're not alive anymore, huh? It says he was born in 1927. Don't say he died. My dude might be uh, approaching 100, so I guess that's why he hasn't made movies recently. Um, last movie he made was back in 2006. Still don't know who the fuck he is. I have no idea. Lone Wolf McQuaid. Oh, Lone Wolf McQuaid came out in 83. Well, I didn't think it was the 70s. It's got that 70s feel. I like, I like that 70s grit to it. All right. Um, I don't see anything here. I mean, we're going back to, yeah, I'm, she's done a lot of shit. But nothing that uh, we would know him from. So, shout out to you, LQ Jones. They didn't mention your name in the trailer. Uh, Rob Roberto Robert Beltran. Was he in Galaxy Quest? No, it looks like he was in uh, huh, some kind of Star Trek. There we go, Voyager. All right, he was in Nixon. He was in Night of the Comet. Really, Night of the Comet. Hmm. Uh -huh. All right, it was a year later. It was a year later. Whatever. He's still working though, isn't he? Yeah. Hey, man, shout out to you. Wait, what was, that looked like a big jump. He did Nixon when? 95, 97. Oh, man, he's only working every couple of years. Unless, maybe those checks are dropped. Maybe he's worked for so long that he's just living off those checks and some shit. He did. He's definitely not living off Lone Wolf McQuaid royalty checks because they haven't played that shit in a long time, and I haven't watched it yet. Um, What's this picture right there? I bet you that's John Ashton. That is John Ashton. That's not John Ashton. That's Paul Bartlett. And it's in uh, Eating Raul. So he was also in Eating Raul. Never heard of it. 1982. Damn, she's cute. Who's she? Mary Warna. Woronov. Woronov. Huh. Born in 43. Too old for me. Uh, she was in Warlock. She. What the fuck? She was in Night of the Comet too? God damn. 
Are you fucking kidding me? Two people from Lone Wolf McQuaid were in Night of the Comet. Interesting. Um, one was Robert Beltran. The other one was this lady here. Uh, Mary Woronov. Woronov. Woronov sounds good. Yo, she was hot back in the day. God damn. For reals. All right. Get out of here, Mary. Fuck out of here. All right. Here we go. Leon Isaac Kennedy. Yo, is that... That that dude, that's not him. That's... Can't... No. Mate, isn't that Jamal Fanaka? Jamal Fanaka from Penitentiary? Oh, this dude was not Penitentiary, but he's not Jamal Fanaka. Hold on. Wait a minute. You know what we got to do. I got to go to Penitentiary 2. That's Penitentiary Part 2. No, Penitentiary 3. Penitentiary had a 3? Huh. What happened to this dude? How come he don't... More than 49. Seems to still be alive. Hasn't made a movie since 91. Penitentiary 3 was in 87. Dude didn't have that long of a career. What's up? Eh, he did Body and Soul. Which I vaguely remember. Knights of the City. Tell me he was in Knights of the City. I was just talking about that movie today. Holy shit. Knights of the fucking City. Yo, how many of you know about this movie? Knights of the City. I was in Puerto Rico for one summer. And I had like three movies with me. Maybe four movies. I had um, Predator. I had Commando. It was, it was an Arnold Schwarzenegger summer there. I had um, Robocop. And I had Knights, in the, Knights of the City. I don't know why. And this movie's fucking weird, I think. And you can't find this anywhere. Like, let's say I want to rent this and watch this right now and do a fucking podcast with this one. Where do I find it? Nowhere. Who's in this? Lee and Isaac Kennedy. All right. Clearly. How the fuck do you think we got here? Um, man, he's the lead, too. I don't, I don't know any of these other... Mr. Freeze was in the movie, so... Eddie Guy. I, yeah, dude. I don't know any of these fucking people. So, anyway. Um, but And you can't find it anywhere. Wow, man. I was just... This is, this is an obscure movie. So fucking obscure, I don't even remember it, and I watched it for an entire summer. Oh, man. And there's no way I can find out what this is. Did they have any other posters? Uh... <laughs> um... Now, don't get me wrong. It's a good poster. But it seems like it came with the first poster, and they were like, hey, man, uh, we need... We, we need... Um, what's this guy's name? Leon Isaac Kennedy. Leon Isaac. I'm just going to call you Leon, all right? Leon. Yo. <laughs> we need to put him on front and center of the poster. He's a star of the movie. We need to make him look good. But remember, he's he's a badass, man. He could fight. He's got the chain. he got the fucking the, 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 the wristbands over here. The, the bracelets with the fucking studs and the spikes on them. Yo, he got the wild vein going up his arm. He got all this shit going on. All right? And remember, he can dance. Yeah, he can fucking dance. That's the shit. Because at the end... We're trying to tell a message here. It don't always have to be a fight. It could end in a dance. And then they then then she was like, Yeah, yeah, I'm feeling that, I'm feeling that. And he's ass kicking all this shit. Remember, it's eighty six with so Stallone, a Rambo, and then fucking Schwarzenegger, Terminator Predator. That's all a big influence, right? She comes back with this poster. He's like, What the fuck is this? She's like, I went with everything that you told me about. He was like, Whoa, 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 whoa. First of all, uh Leon ain't that big. Alright? I said the veins going up his arms because he's skinny and I think he got a heroin problem. Shh, don't keep it on the low. Can't talk about that. You know, he might have some problems. I seen veins, but, but he's definitely not jacked like that. He got good build. You know, I, th- I think he danced because he's in this movie. So I'm assuming he can dance, right? We didn't hire the wrong fucking dude, right? We weren't supposed to get Elder Barge for this fucking movie. He can dance. Well, we well he gonna fucking learn how to dance. All right, I don't give a fuck. But anyway, um, take this back to the drawing board. Um, I don't because I don't think that's gonna work. Um, and then why why you got the flash guy, the flash. Uh, dance girl in the back there with with that Shawn Michaels hat on from '95. Yeah, uh, that shit's gotta go. Um, it's, it's it's not working, not working. Um, and his Jerry curls, he's he looks like fucking um, Ozone from Breaking on steroids. Does that also say featuring hot tracks by the Fat Boys, Curtis Blow, KC? Oh shit, yo, I think this is um where these dudes get get arrested at some point. For uh, fight dancing <laughs> or dance fighting or whatever the fuck you want to call that shit. And they end up um, in bookings for the night. 
and uh, who's in there with them, but like Curtis Blow, the Fat Boys, and they start rapping in jail, and the Fat Boys just going in jail without no bail. In jail, and then Buffy like, oh that shit fucking gives me a throat. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's that. I think they stood that, and then the dude was like, the marketing department was like, um, you know what? I like it. It's good. Um, we, we, the girl's gotta go. Lose the girl. Uh, get that out of there. What should we fill the back with? I'm, I'm getting there. Just give it a minute. Um, you know that people are gonna say we're lying when, when, when we put out this poster. They buy a ticket, then they see the movie, and they see um, Leon over here, skinny. They're gonna think he's on coke. He's on crack. He got AIDS. He's got something. He's lose like he's losing weight. He's sick, and it's gonna fuck up his career because they're gonna expect to see Black Rambo, and you giving him fucking itchy crackhead over here, and you got you gotta fix that. And then they're like, so for now, I like it. Where you were going with it, good idea. For now, though, uh, let, let's lose that. Let's, let's work on it. I'm not saying it's not going to come back, but we'll keep that um, for later, for something else. Maybe the sequel, and then he starts working out and gets big. Just not bad. I like it. Not what we're going for. Not working for us right now. Um, you see that bottom part there, though, the guys in the shadows? Um, yeah, I don't know who they are. They're just backup dancers, but it kind of works. It kind of works. Um... Let's go with that. Yeah. Yeah. Blow that shit up. Blow it up. Bring it front and center. Make it, make, make it the whole fucking frame. There we go. There we go. Shadow on the face, though. Shadow it. Uh, I need a little more silhouette because they're nobody. There you go. There you go. They, they look like a band. Like, if they were in a fucking alley and um, dudes came out, they're like, hey, man, <laughs> give me your wallet. I'm like, hey, man, <laughs> go fuck yourself. Yeah, no. They just, I mean, granted, there's uh, five of them, right? One of me. Um, first of all, the old timer over here, Mr. Baldhead, I guess it was cool to have a bald head in the 80s. Like, Yo, that dude got no hair. He's crazy. I don't know why in, in the fucking, unless you are old, they're like, oh, his hair just fucking gave up on him. They're like, nah, you know what, dude? I'm going to sit out the second half of this life. Um, good one. Nice run, but we're out. Okay. Thanks. It was fun. I'm tired of the way you treat us. I'm getting the fuck out of here. Good luck on your own with no hair. I heard there's a good wig place. You know, Maury's? Check that place out. Uh, so first of all, I would go fuck that dude because he's pretty probably old, or he's really badass. But you, you got to take him out because if he's the strongest one, he um, and he probably got a, got a knife. Like everybody else got pipes and crowbars and chains and shit. He got the one thing that can actually puncture you. He got a switchblade or something. So you got to fuck him up first. Um, second, I say you got to go. You, you you quickly take out the dude with the chain. You take out this guy. All right, um, and he's probably easy. You punch him in the sunglasses and then you bring down his his uh, headband. Choke him out with that, and then uh, you gotta beat him with the chain. You gotta beat him next because he's got long distance with the chain. He could like use it like a bull whip, and then he keeps you from a distance, and you can't come close. So you get that chain. Now you use that chain on everybody else. You're gonna take out this guy quick. <laughs> you just fucking catch him, catch him right across the face, and then you get a shot of the crowbar dropping to the floor because that might come in later. Why? Because now she's gonna come. I'm big. Bad, I'm a bitch. Now, I don't know what she's holding. It could be nunchucks. That's when, when you have the battle with the chain, right? <laughs> chain and the nunchucks. Pa, 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 pa. And he goes, he's like, hey, I don't want to hit a girl. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fucking get the chain, wrap it around your ankle, and then tie it to a rock and push you off a cliff. And you're going to be dangling. You're not dead. And I didn't hit you. But you are hanging off a fucking cliff. Good luck. Um, and then here comes the leader with the fucking, with, with, with the stripes over here, with the, the thing, suspenders, that's what they call them. Why would I call them stripes, you idiot? But he's got the biggest crowbar of the bunch. He's got like the brand new crowbar where you can just, you know, uh, it, it's, it's like to yank shit out of the wall, to tear walls down. It's got the hook on there. Um, but remember, you knock the crowbar out of the Hamburglar's hands over here, okay? And that shit is still on the floor. You could pick that up. And now you're going to have this big... Um, Vin Diesel, Jason Statham, battled the crowbars, okay? And then you end up doing some shit. Yo, first of all, my guy's in a crop top. He's in a crop top and suspenders. You can't lose to this fucking guy, okay? And when you fuck him up, you fuck him up good. You embarrass him for wearing that crop top, but you fuck him up with those goddamn suspenders. That's exactly how you go and do that shit. All right. I, where the fuck was I going with this? Where, wasn't I watching Chuck Norris trailers? Hang out. God damn it. I'll keep these fucking rabbit holes. All right, Nights in the City. There's nowhere I can find this, and, and if I want to see it. Now, if somebody out there can figure out where I can find Nights of the City, please let me know, so that way we can we can do this fucking thing. I will rent that, and we're going to do like a, like, like a, uh, the voice, not the voiceover, the fucking uh, watch-along deals. You know, the things that you love. So check it out on YouTube. There's a bunch of them there. 
All right, here we go. So nice in the city. Looking out for that. What's it about, though? A street gang that is also a rap group. <laughs> of course it is. Tries to get a record contract. A street gang that is also a rap group tries to get a record contract. Oh, man. Hey, this 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 is um this is straight out of Compton for straight out of Compton. This is um straight out of Shitville. So, well, so you tell me that those dudes, those white dudes, are the rappers. You can get the fuck out of here right now. Yeah, those are the rappers. A street gang that is also a rap group. That's your fucking rap group. Go fuck yourself. Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Penitentiary three. Oh, Jamal Fanaka wrote and directed. Oh, okay. Who's Jamal Fanaka? I always thought Jamal Fanaka was in Penitentiary 3. I didn't realize Leon Isaac Kennedy was a star. I thought Jamal Fanaka was a star. Let me see what Jamal Fanaka looked like. Oh, Jamal Fanaka died. <gasps> Get the fuck out. He died in 2012. I didn't know about that. Jamal Fanaka was born. For, all right, I don't give a fuck when he was born. Hey, he was a director, writer known for Welcome Home, Brother Charles, Street Wars. Oh, he didn't do much. MMA, Penitentiary, Penitentiary 2, Penitentiary 3, Street Wars. And they were like, hey, you know what? We're going to stop investing in, in you, Jamal Fanaka. Thank you. And then they said, uh, go do something else. I guess Penitentiary 1 was pretty good. I like the poster of Penitentiary 2. That shit looked pretty badass. 82. Look at that poster, man. That's fucking dope. This shit here needs to be on a t-shirt. Whoa, is that Mr. T? Mr. T? Yo, Mr. T was in Penitentiary 2? <gasps> Get the fuck out of here. How did I not know this? Oh, we gotta watch Penitentiary 2. We are not watching Penitentiary 2 now. But yo, I... Alright, listen. I'm putting it on the list. Penitentiary 2, Jamafanak. I don't know if I want to see Penitentiary 1. Here's what we do. We fuck things up like we normally fuck things up. We start with number 2. And then if we like it, then we go back. And we watch the first one like it, like it's a prequel. Holy shit, man. Mr. T. I don't know why I'm so excited that Mr. T. Holy shit. Ernie Hudson was in Penitentiary too. Ernie fucking Hudson. You know Ernie Hudson. The fucking black Ghostbuster. Boom. God damn, Ernie. Good job for you. Look at Ernie Hudson. They're like, yo, Ernie, which uh, photo you want to use for your, your uh, IMDB picture profile thing? He's like, oh, I got it. This one. I'm <laughs> like, damn, damn, Ernie, you looking fucking jack. Yeah, I know. Damn, Ernie, you still looking young. How old, how old are you now? Oh, don't worry about it, but you looking good. Yeah, I know. <laughs> damn, Ernie, fuck, man. Yo, they should. Get, yo, the next time they do an Expendables Moons movie, Sly needs to call you. <clears throat> yeah, I know. <laughs> what? Are, yo, they they gotta use Ernie Hudson more often. Ernie Hudson's a good fucking actor, man. Gotta see him in more shit. Oh, apparently he's done more shit. I haven't seen shit that he's, like, like making a big deal. Because Ernie Hudson in the movie. It's just like, oh, Ernie Hudson in the background. Yo, Ernie Hudson needs to be front and center. That's that's a good dude. Put him in a movie, man. Come on. Let's get some more Ernie Hudson out there. Definitely want to see some Ernie Hudson movies. I'm not going to go looking to watch Ernie Hudson movies now. But I'm just saying, let's get him in some more shit. And then when I go to watch that shit, I'm like, oh, shit, Ernie Hudson. That's what we're going to do. Where the fuck was I going? Um, Jamal Fanaka. Okay, we got an answer there. We also got a movie to watch. Should we watch... Man, should we watch the penitentiary too? Fuck it. <laughs> See, we got to watch the trailer, right? Oh, yeah, man. I thought it was just going to be... Um, I just thought it was going to be Lone Wolf McQuaid. But we're going to do this, right? <laughs> All right. Let's go. How long have we been doing there? Yeah, okay, we could do this. Give me that shit full screen. What's that? Oh, shit. That looked like Tango and Cash. Hold the fuck up. Check this out. That's when they brought Kurt Russell. Now, too sweet oh shit, that's Ernie Hudson. Yes. His name's Too Sweet. He's bad, beautiful, and he's looking for action. 
Oh shit, well I think he found the action. Oh shit, is that the gym where Apollo Oh shit! Is that Clubber Lang? That's Clubber Lang. Oh shit, yo, it's the origin story of Clubber Lang. Holy shit! He made a deal to get out. You want to be a wise guy? But the man wants to change it. Well, I've got employment. Of course, of course. This is the story of why Clever Lang is so fucking evil. And look at that. Oh, man. Oh, look at Ernie Hudson as a bad guy. Yo, we gotta watch. We, we, we fucking this trailer up right now. I love you. I'm gonna watch it first. But, but I wanna see. Oh, I, I, I gotta go frame by frame on this one. Oh, shit. Ooh, watch that booty. My damn, that's the biggest switchblade i ever seen. Oh my god, we are watching this fucking movie. Yo, did Ernie Hudson just have his dick out? That ravishing Rick Lee? Oh no, that's fucking uh, not Jamal Fanaka. That's Leon. Oh shit. Yo, is that Leon Spinks? They're fighting in the jail. That's why they call it penitentiary, you dumb motherfucker. Oh my god. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Yo. Oh shit. Yo. Alright. Listen. We are definitely first of all, I'm going back. I'm going to watch that trailer one more time. Alright. Um But we are definitely, definitely watching that movie in its entirety. Absolutely happening. Like we just stumbled upon some shit. It's like, what the fuck? That's like that was like a gift. That was like when that time we were watching Maniac Cop 2 and then uh, Cockfighter came out. Remember Cockfighter? That that's what this shit is. Penitentiary two. I gotta go frame by frame. This is this is the bonus trailer on this episode here. So it's gonna be Lone Wolf McQuaid and Penitentiary two. Yo, look at this shit. All right. So obviously, what it looks like here, it looks like. So this is Penitentiary two. In Penitentiary one, it seems like Jamal Fanaka, not Jamal Fanaka, Leon over here, Leon. Something happened with Leon. Leon got framed. Leon went to jail. And he had to fight while he was in the penitentiary. Penitentiary part one. Oh, shit. Good idea. Which I... Yo, if penitentiary one is as good, if not better, than penitentiary two. Because, yo, penitentiary two got me fucking hyped right now, okay? The penitentiary one is like... We're doing that one, too. Because I haven't even seen the trailer. I'm not going to find the trailer now. But, fuck. Yeah. Holy shit. That looks good. Anyway, this is my kind of movie. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so anyway, J not Jamal Fanaka. God damn it. I should just call him Jamal Fanaka. It don't even matter. Do you give a fuck if he's Jamal Fanaka or if he's Leon? Hey, you know what? Shout out to Leon. Leon's still alive, so Leon sees his shit. like, yo, the fuck, man? Come on. I ain't do that many movies. You gonna fucking make me look like shit now? Come just call me by my motherfucking name. Leon. Leon. Alright, cool. Alright, so when Leon, he ended up getting out of the penitentiary, they were like, oh shit, you know what? We found out that you were, you were innocent. I'm assuming. I'm assuming. I don't know. I haven't watched it. But he's like, yo, I was innocent. So he comes out. He goes home. He's like, fuck that. Damn, we'll kick back. Watch some TV. See the Yankees are playing. And then, boom, here's the fucking thing. Knock, knock, motherfucker. Who is it? It's the police, motherfucker. We're taking you back to the penitentiary, too. I'm like, oh, shit. And then this is what happens. Because he knows the sound of the sirens and shit like that, right? He knows what the fuck's going on. So he's like, god damn, they came for me again. Oh, look at that. All right, now, first of all, this dude looked like uh, Punjab from the Annie movies and from um, some other movie that he was in that, that he was pretty funny in. Um, I think he did some 7-Up commercials like, oh, 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 have a nice day, ha, 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 whatever the fuck. Anyway, um, this scene is very Tango and Cash, like when um, the dude from last year, I don't remember his name, but the dude from Maniac Cop came and fucked up Tango and Cash. He was he was like, yo, we found... He, we're in jail. He obviously had some stroke in jail. He was like, yo, go get me that inmate and bring him down to the boiler room. Which one? I don't even know how to get to the... Where's the boiler room? Find the fucking boiler room. Take him. Bring him to the motherfucking boiler room. Don't be late. And then this dude's there. He must run the... He must run the penitentiary. That's what's going on with this dude. All right. Let me see. 
Jamal Fanaka scared as shit over here. He's like, oh shit, goddamn, I'm gonna have to fight? This dude must be fucking bigger and badder than the last dude that I fought in the last penitentiary, which we haven't seen yet, so we know nothing about that penitentiary movie. Whoa, whoa, oh shit, wait, that was Ernie Hudson. I keep forgetting. You see, Ernie Hudson could play two different characters because um, from one side, he looked like a psycho killer, and right now, he looks like fucking early Ernie Hudson. He done his time in one Yo, that shit there, uh, again, I wouldn't know what the showers are like in jail, but these dudes, that's kind of fucked up when you got to fight like that. Because he looked too sweet, looked like he doing, they call him too sweet for a reason, and it's not like the NWO, too sweet. I mean, it, might, it might be, it might be, maybe that's where they got it from. I don't know about Scott Hall and Kevin Nash and Shawn Michaels and the, the click and all that shit like that. I don't know where Too Sweet came from, but if his name's Too Sweet, maybe the click and the now NWO. Yeah, maybe maybe the NWO and the Generation X, maybe they're all big fans of, of Jamal Fanaka and Penitentiary too, and, and Mr. Too Sweet over here. All he could to stay out of Jamal. Why do I feel like that's going to be like a jail rape scene? Like, like, yo, bring me Jamal Fanaka. You mean Leon? Th- bring me that motherfucker. Bring him down here. Whatever his fuck his name is. Leon Jamanga motherfucker Naka fucker. Dude, I'm going to fuck him up when he gets over here. That's what's going to happen. And then he takes him. Uh, <laughs> and then he's like, yo, strip him down. Uh, Why? Because I said so. It's going to be more embarrassing. Then I'm going to strip down. Uh, but he's already stripped. Why you got to strip? Because I'm going to show him that I'm a real man. I don't think he needs to know that if he's going to die. Um, boss, do I really have to strip him down? Is it necessary? Fucking strip him down. I'm stripping down now. I'm going to soap him up. So, I'm like, whoa. What if you? <laughs> I thought we were going to kill him. We all going to kill him. He's going to slip on the soap. <laughs> penitentiary 3. <laughs> Yo, Penitentiary 2. I'm saying 3. There is a 3. Look at how bad that title card is. <laughs> oh, shit. They, they went to fucking Studio 54. They're like, yo, Jamal Fanaka. I'm not Jamal Fanaka. My name's fucking Leon. Leon, you want to go out to the club? Come on, man. Look what you missed while you were in the penitentiary. He's like, yo, I was only there for one movie. Oh, well, shit ain't changed. Let's go out anyway. <laughs> Welcome home, Jamal Fanaka. It's fucking Leon, bitch. <laughs> Two sweet, <back>. Two sweet <laughs> who made me this? <laughs> Two sweet. Oh, so clearly he was only gone for for about nine months. <laughs> well, that baby's probably walking, so maybe it's a little bit longer. I don't know how long Jamal Fanaka and Leon were in the penitentiary for, but uh, it was long enough for her. To um, have a baby and teach him how to walk. He's probably potty trained by this time. Um, you're like, Daddy, will you teach me roundhouse kicks? Uh, first, Daddy's going to teach you about this fucking jerry curl activator. Dude, because your fro is really dry and you want to look like me and Jamal Fanaka. Look at this dude. Who the hell was that? Was that the dude from WKRP in Cincinnati? Oh, man. What was his name? Fuck. I got to go find out his name. I'm sorry. I, I, you know I got to find this dude's name out. All right. This dude was like the DJ. Yeah, yeah, that dude up there. Him, 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 him. What's his name? What's his name? I don't even want his real name. I want to call him by his gimmick name. There we go. There we go. There he is. Tim Reed. Tim Reed, right? Uh, come on. Open up. Tim Reed. Yes, Tim Reed. My dude. Yo, he still looks good, man. Good for him. Shout out to Tim Reed. Needs to be in more movies. I don't know how old is Tim Reed now. Tim Reed is ooh, born in 144. Tim Reed kind of fucking old. Tim Reed got to be in the, Tim Reed's in the 70s. Tim Reed was in it. He played Mike. Oh shit! He played Mike. I gotta tell this Nico. Oh shit! Wait till Nico finds. All right, whatever. Anyway, who did he play? He played Venus Flytrap. How the fuck did I not remember that name? What a fucking name, yo man. What's up, bitches? This is Venus Flytrap on WKRP in Cincinnati. Yo, I wanna be Venus Flytrap now. That shit sounded kind of dope, right? Yo, shout out to Tim Reed. I want to see Tim Reed in more movies. Tim Reed and Ernie Hudson. Put them in more movies. Matter of fact, we got to put that out on Twitter. We're going to put that on Twitter. I want to make it pop on Twitter. 
I hope Tim Reed and Ernie Hudson are both on Twitter. Maybe not Tim Reed. He's in the 70s. He's like, what is this tweeting shit that you want me to do here? What what the fuck is this? Or maybe his fucking Twitter handle is at Venus Flytrap. I don't know. I don't know. Venus Flytrap. That shit sounds like a pussy, right? Like she just grabs the, the, the dick. I ain't letting it go. I ain't letting it go. Like, oh shit, my dick. My dick. You gotta let it go. Let, let it go. Let it go. No, I ain't letting it go until you say you're gonna fucking marry me. But anyway, okay, so <laughs> penitentiary. Oh, we're back at the trailer. I forgot about the trailer. Okay, play the trailer. That is a fucking jam, man. I don't know. That's in some little club. It's just like you, you got to know the secret not to get in there. But that's a fucking jam. Look at that. What's going on in there? They're having a good time. I want to party with Venus Flytrap. Fuck, is Venus Flytrap in this movie? God damn. Yo, I must be getting old timers or dementia or something. I know so. How did I get to fucking Venus Flytrap? Fuck me. Wow. You know what? When I'm if, when I'm fucking editing this, I'm like, oh, that's how I got to Venus Flytrap. <laughs> anyway, whatever the case is. Is that Sam Jackson with it? Nah, man, I can't be Sam Jackson. That dude got the crazy white Santa beard. Look at that fucking beard. God damn. That's a bad motherfucker. You know what I do? I pop his fucking chain, though. They're like, what? Oh, you want to find? And then I grab him by the beard and I fucking and I hold on to it and yank his fucking jaw down. Just bra 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 bra. Just fucking grab him like that. All right. After I pop his chain, cause pop his chain, I won't be able to get to his beard. He'll be blocking his beard. Like, yo, don't fuck with my beard. I'm working on that shit. Be first black Santa Claus. Don't fuck with me. And then I pop his chain. <laughs> oh shit, my chain. And you grab him by the fucking beard. Bra 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 bra. And then that's how you handle him. If he was one of the fucking, um, if he was one of the 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 uh, rap dancers, the the gang rap dancers from Nights of the City. <laughs> I don't want to make it seem like I'm just running around beating up dudes in chains and fucking beards. It got nothing to do with that. I'm just saying, if you got a chain, that's how I distract you. It's like fuck you up because your head, your mind goes to the chain. Like oh shit, my chain. And then you know that's it. So I'm not randomly just fucking up here. I'm I'm just saying, if you in a fight. Somebody from a gang, they wearing anybody who's wearing a chain. Basically, if you're just in a fucking fight, pop the chain first. There you go. Okay, this dude looked like fucking Cyrus from um from the Warriors. He looked like like this is early Cyrus before. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? You, you, can you dig this motherfucking bar? Yeah. Can you dig it? <laughs> yeah. Let's go fucking dance with these bitches. And he's the click, at the click. <laughs> Yo, what? Yo, hold the fuck up. Hold the fuck up. Yo, what are the fucking chances, man? What are the chances that this fucking movie, Ernie Hudson, is called Too Sweet, and the name of this band is called Click? Click and Too Sweet. Yo. I'm telling you right now, Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, Shawn Michaels, Hulk Hogan, Shawn Waltman, at least those five, at least those five, they got to be. Oh, oh, let's not forget Triple H, um, um, well, six, those six, okay? Yo, they got to be big fans of Penitentiary 3. Penitentiary 2. Penitentiary, they got to be fans of Penitentiary 2. Yo. This movie influenced the WWE Attitude Era. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like, what is it? Too Sweet and the Click in a Jamal Fanaka movie. And they were like, maybe they're on the road. They're like, yo, what are we going to watch tonight? It's like, I don't know, man. What we got in the bag? I got Penitentiary 2. Fuck it, man. Play it. Play it. Play it. And then every time they say, Too Sweet. And like, yo, we should call ourselves a group. I, well, there was a dope ass group in that club. It was like, kind of like the club we were at last night. Um,. But but they were, the chicks were hotter. Like, they weren't wearing aluminum foil and shit like that. And they're like, yeah, what was the name of that club? Uh, I don't know if it was a club. It might have been the band. Well, what the fuck was the name? It was the Click. I like it. Taking it. It's ours. Taxed. Owned. Thank you. All right. Back to the trailer. All right. That's kind of creepy there. All right. Listen, my guy, I know you just got out of fucking jail. You got out of the penitentiary. And the first thing you want to do is get yourself some striped pussy ass in her in her Jane Fonda workout gear, all right? I get it, but dude, 
you just got out the penitentiary. She finds that out. She's like, oh, no. This dude trying to rape me? Oh, shit. I'm going to call the police. And then what happens? You go home. You think it's consensual. All right? She's like, I don't know. No, I was scared because he just said he got out of jail. And I didn't want to make any moves. He never told me what he went to jail for. And now all of a sudden, he's in the corner. He's over there, you know, scheming on me, just staring at my ass. And I'm over here in these striped ass Jane Fonda Lululemons. And then he's over there like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to hit that. I'm going to eat your ass sideways. I'm going to lick you up and down. And if you remember, this is the fucking, this is 1982. So obviously, she still, they weren't shaving the pussy yet. She still got like the monster Harry Bush. Her bush probably looks like his head. And they're going to fucking make some statics. You can put some fucking sparkles in her pussy when it's just a static clean with the afro against the, the fucking shaved pussy hair. And that's disgusting. But interesting, man. I mean, we could make that NC-17 and that shit works. Like, yo, you Fucking Darren Aronofsky did that ass-to-ass thing in a strip club with Jennifer Connelly and that other chick. They fucking shared a dildo. You tell me I just can't rub an afro on some pussy hair from 1982? The fuck out of here, man. That, I mean, that's that not even penetration. Not even penetration. That's just friction. Friction. That's, that's pulp friction. There you go. Bam. Just made a movie. Yo. They look like... That looked like Mickey's gym from Rocky. <laughs> Hey, hey, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, so this is what happened. This is what happened. So I know we were talking about this before when we first saw the trailer. This here has got to be the origins of a of, of Clubber Lang. This has got to be where Clubber Lang started. Like, he was an aspiring boxer. And then he went to Mickey. Mickey was like, I'm not training you. You're a fucking bum. It's like. I pity the fool who called me a bum, Mickey. I didn't like that shit. And then he fucking leaves and heads back to Chicago because he's got nothing. He's homeless. He's living in the street. But this is the story about when he went to Mickey's gym and he was working out and Mickey wouldn't give him the time of day. He got mad because he was sleeping in the street eating with the fucking pigeons. He's like, I just want to be a boxer. I'm so mean. I got no family. I got nowhere to go. I'm homeless. I'm just mad. Uh, uh, look at my fucking hair. I can only afford half a haircut. Uh, motherfucker. Uh. And then you're telling the story now of how he became... One year later, because this came out in 82. Fuck, I want to say that Rocky came out in 82 as well. So they came out back to it like it was in the same year. So like exactly after this ha- shit happened, he went to Chicago and, and started stalking Sylvester Stallone. He started stalking Rocky Balboa. He was like, I want to show the title, motherfucker. I'm sleeping on a bench. I'm eating with the pigeons. I eat out of a trash can. Look at my fucking head. It's half a haircut. Give me a fucking title shot. I go in there and I kill you. I eat you, motherfucker. I eat you. And then he, Rocky was like, hey, yo, uh, the fucking, uh, yo, and then Mick's like, nah, I know all about this motherfucker. This motherfucker came to my gym, and I wouldn't train him. Now he wants to kill you. <laughs> That's the fucking backstory. It's that fucking Mickey fucking shut down. He, he told, um, he told Clubber Lang that he wasn't shit and that he was a bum and he fucking threw him out of the gym. He said, you got no skills, you got no talent, you'll never be a champion. Or maybe, maybe Mickey was like, oh shit, this kid is a fucking, if I train him, he's going to fuck Rocky up real bad. I can't, I can't let him do that. Yo, Rocky's, Rocky's the goose, the golden goose over here. I can't let this dude fuck him because this dude, I don't know what happens. I train him, he becomes a champion. He's going to go get like, like, like a real fucking sports agent and a manager. He's going to have these high profile fights and I'm just a bum from Philly. Um, I need to stick with with the dumb rock head over here <laughs> you know he he got like so many fucking concussions he can't even talk right um but he pays me all right i live in his fucking mansion club of lang ain't gonna let me live in his mansion fuck that shit so he 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 gets rid of club of lang to protect rocky that's what it is so he called him a bum and a piece of shit he was like yo you'll never fucking make it and um but he did it to protect Rocky. He was like, yo, that dude ever becomes a real boxer, he's going to fucking kill you. And then, lo and behold, lo and behold, Clubber Lang ends up killing Mickey. Remember that in Rocky Three? Mickey ends up dying because he kind of like shoved him a little bit. And Mickey's heart's like, oh my God, if I just want to fucking train you. And Rock's like, yo, Mick, Mick, and all that shit. And then Clubber's like, oh, uh, that was not me. Um, like, I know we had beef. I know that I was, I yes, yes, he threw me out of the gym, um, but because he said I didn't have talent. I, I, I didn't kill him because he said I didn't have talent. I, I was just like, he was grabbing on me. He was actually begging me to come back. I mean, he would tell you that, but he's dead right now. He was begging. He was like, yo, please, come on, come on. You don't have to do this to Rocky. I can train the two of you. I can make you uh, super heavyweight or something like that. And he was he was begging me. He was grabbing my gloves. I'm like, yo, stop fucking with my gloves because I'm about to go in this fight and my gloves are going to be loose. Stuff like that. So I, I shoved him off me and he fell and then he died. But it wasn't me, and it was—it wasn't because of our beef. It had nothing to do. It had nothing to do with Penitentiary Two. Let's just say that. 
Now I gotta see Burgess Meredith. Meredith is in this movie. Let me see. Jamal Fanak is in this movie. Oh, that might no. I was gonna say it'd be Young Mickey, but this is the same year. So wait. <laughs> he owns the club. You know Mickey can't be the fucking rent. Ugh, 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 I want Balboa. I want Balboa. <laughs> hey, woman. Oh. You see, he's turning the fucking clever line. He's turning the fucking clever line. Look at, look at, look at that punch. Oh my God. <laughs> what the fuck was that? Yo. What the fuck is this? Uh, you knocked me the fuck out. That's not fair. Come here, motherfucker. Do it again. I dare you. I double dare you, motherfucker. And then Clubber Lang knocked him the fuck out. He said, boxing in for me. And he became a hitman for Marcellus Wallace. That's the story of Jules as well. You didn't know we had a fucking Pulp Fiction reference here, did you? He ends up going to L.A. Club of Langos, Chicago. He goes to L.A. He says, because you can't come to L.A. You can't come to Chicago, and I can't go to L.A. This shit just don't work out for us. You go your way, I go mine, but fuck you, Jules. A deal to get out. You want to be a wise guy? But the man wants to change it. Well, I've got employment for you. Oh, shit. They sent, they sent Leon in, and he was like, oh, shit. This Club of Lang is a real fucking deal. The, oh, do you know what? This is probably the story of how Clubber Lang, the first boxer that Clubber Lang killed before he fought Rocky. So now you know why. Because you, you, they show Clubber in a couple of, like in a video montage at the beginning of Rocky III, um, just like knocking motherfuckers out. But this one, you actually see like how bad he is and why he became bad. Hey, yo, we took way too much time talking about fucking Rocky III. Funny shit, though. Funny shit. We should write that and let Michael B. Jordan direct it. <laughs> Yo, what? You know what he should have done right there? You see, somebody should have, should have fucking told. Somebody should have fucking told Sylvester Stallone. All right, if Mickey was smart enough, he would have looked at him and was like, "Yo, Sly, Rock, here's what you gotta do. You get in the ring with Mr. T. What's he got? What's he got? He's got power. He's got speed. They like, no, Rock, shut the fuck up. You know what the hell you talk about? You shut. Just close your fucking lips. Don't don't say a word. What is what does Mr. T have more of than anything else? I don't know, Mick. He got fucking chains. He got gold chains. Look at it. He's wearing one right now. Pop his fucking chains. All right. He got like a hundred of them around his fucking neck. Rip his fucking chains. And when he's not looking, he's like, oh shit. No, wait. What's Mr. T voice? Oh shit. Motherfucker broke my chains. And, <laughs> and then when he's over there picking up 150 chains from the fucking boxing ring, you just start beating the shit out of him. Uh, what do you want me to hit him? The ball part of his fucking mohawk. Hit him in the ball part. Because his, he got so much fucking hair, your, your, your gloves are just gonna like, they're just gonna bounce right off it. It's gonna be like, like, like punching a pillow. Punch him in the skull. Knock him in the skull, Rock. That's what you gotta do. But don't forget, pop his motherfucking chain. I see your point. Nick <laughs> How big is that fucking switchblade? God damn. Like, I've seen switchblades before, but this shit is like a fucking turkey knife. <laughs> Yo, come to my house. Come to the Hudson house. It's Thanksgiving, and you the motherfucking turkey, Leon. <laughs> Job turkey. That's what this should have been. Penitentiary 2. Job turkey. <laughs> Something getting <laughs> Yo. Well, if Ernie Hudson is such a bad motherfucker, why he in the back of the fucking Sanford and Son truck? <laughs> he over here with fucking Red Fox and his son. Where you want to go, Ernie Hudson? <laughs> motherfucker, you should know where I want to go. God damn it. Well, Ernie Hudson, if you was just such a baller, fucking killer, drug dealer, what the fuck, man? How come you don't have a limousine? I just got a jail, motherfucker. I'm waiting for the limousines. Coming in next week. So I got to drive this shit right now. <laughs> this is Uber in the 70s. You got stuck with Sanford and son. <laughs> I love you so much. Yo. <laughs> And then she went on to be the hooker so in, uh, <laughs> in, in, uh, what the hell is the name of that the Kubrick War movie? Full Metal Jacket. Me so horny. Me love you long time. <laughs> She's like, um, you're not Asian, but I can be. <laughs> like, 
yeah, we want to give this role to an authentic Asian Vietnamese girl. She said, no, I need this job, please. I can be whatever you want. Look, me so horny. Me love you long time. That was pretty fucking good. And my dick is hard. You know what? Fuck it. You got the role. Let's do that. <laughs> Yo, are you hunting over here? Fucking stalking people. <laughs> Yo, he's so fucking... This dude is so fucking popped, he can't even afford a gun. He's just walking away with that giant ass switchblade. I need, I need a knife. What gun? Switchblade. Switchblade looks bad, right? Bad motherfuckers got switchblade. How big? I don't care how big. Just give me a switchblade. I need that. He start creeping up with the switchblade. Go ahead, motherfucker. Come on. I cut you in the dark. While he was doing time, wait, she what? was waiting. Oh, wait. Bullshit. Bull fucking shit. Hold on. He said, while he was doing time, she was waiting, which is lying ass shit because now Ernie, she was fucking Ernie Hudson on the side. Ernie Hudson was like, yo, man, fuck him. He's in jail. I'm a real man. I'll take care of you now. Look at me. I run the streets. She's like, you don't run the streets, Ernie Hudson. You fucking driving around San Francisco on car. Shit, you was just in a fucking joint too. How'd you get so much money? Shut the fuck up, bitch. I got a giant switchblade. <laughs> <laughs> Remember I told you about that switch blade? <laughs> I love how Ernie Hudson's holding her hostage and he's like, now you stay right there, don't fucking move. Don't fucking move. I, I cut your fucking eye out, don't move. I'm gonna get naked. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get you know what? I got you hostage. Let's make this weird. I'm getting naked. And then I'm gonna stand here and then you're gonna get in the shower. You're gonna wash yourself while I hold this fucking giant switchblade, okay? And I'm gonna watch that shit. Okay, you wash yourself real slow. <laughs> she drove me like, ah, uh, oh, <laughs> uh, I need a shower anyway. I'm kind of sweaty and I got bruises and blood on me from all the shit that went on in the previous scene. I, so if you don't mind, I'll take a shower. You can watch. Kind of creepy. But can you at least put your clothes on, Ernie Hudson? And Ernie Hudson's like, motherfucker, in two years, I'm going to be a fucking Ghostbuster. She's like, call me then, and then we'll do it. Get some of that Ghostbuster money. What was Jamafanaka doing there? I mean, Leon. What the fuck was he doing there? Look, first of all, that wallpaper is hideous. Second of all... Is that the screen door or is that the bathroom door? Is that like white smoke and pink smoke? Like what the fuck is going on? Who's the set designer on Penitentiary 2? It don't matter. Because they were just like, yo, it's called Penitentiary 2. Most of it's going to take place in prison. But there is that fucking bedroom scene when she's in the shower. We need you to design that set. <laughs> and he's like, ah, I'm, 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 I only specialize in, in uh, you know, penitentiaries. And he's like, improvise. Fucking Hollywood. Do it, bitch. Or I'll get the fucking job to somebody else. <laughs> I love how that bathroom is big enough for Leon to break in, save the girl, then have a fight. Like, that's a big fucking bathroom. And I'm not sure what her employment status is right now when she's dealing with two fucking felons <laughs> that are fresh out jail, fresh out the penitentiary. <laughs> you clearly are not a fucking working woman. I mean, you may be working the streets, that's about it, but you cannot afford a bathroom that size. No fucking way, okay? And a woman... You know, working in the corporate world, making six figures in the 82, is not fucking around with these, these street dudes. <laughs> That's serving time in the penitentiary. When the world hits you this hard. Yeah, this hard. Yo, Ernie Hudson's dick flying around. That's Ernie Hudson's dick. We found Ernie Hudson's dick. And, and then I don't know if Leon is naked too, so we might have Leon's dick. But... Ernie Hudson, this is only 1982, Ernie Hudson's dick is out, Leon's dick is out, Ernie Hudson does not know yet that you should not cross the streams, do not cross the swords, you shouldn't be fighting when you're naked, you should be like, hey, I'm gonna fuck you up, you know what you do, that's when the bad guy should reveal his fucking plan, when he's butt ass naked, and then while he's talking, instead of just standing there walking around, touching the flowers, and the knobs on the TV, and feeling the wallpaper, you fucking go and be like, I want to get dressed, but I'm, let me tell you a story about while we're getting dressed. And then when I'm trying to get dressed, I'm going to fuck you up. I'm, we're going to fight. We're going to throw hands right now. But I can't do that with my dick out. So let me explain to you why this is happening and how I started in this business and why how we got here. And then uh, by that time, I should have some underwears on. My dick tucked away. You should do the same. Like, it's okay. I won't hit you. No sucker punch. <laughs> I don't want to hit a dude with his dick out. 
Because you accidentally, you're afraid you might actually hit the dick. You might, like, what happened, you grab each other, you start fighting, and then, you know, when, when you lock up, and like, ah, oh, nobody can throw a punch because you guys are holding each other, and then below, your fucking dicks are touching, and like, no, no, it, no and you, it's an awkward fight. And then that, you know what you do at that point? You see if that motherfucker's wearing a chain. So that way you could pop his fucking chain, all right, and then punch him in the dick or, or do something or, or, like, slam his dick in the door. His dick is out. Kick him in the dick, and that way in the future he'll know never to fucking fight naked again. But ladies and gentlemen, Ernie Hudson's State Puff Marshmallow Man in the dick. You hit back harder. Go back to the penitentiary. Ravishing. Too sweet. Oh shit, wait. Oh shit, I'm over here thinking that fucking Ernie Hudson was too sweet. Leon is too sweet. <gasps> Why they calling him too sweet? That's because Ernie Hudson fucked him in jail. He was like, God damn, Jamal Fanaka. I'm not Jamal Fanaka. Whatever the fuck your name is. Leon, call yourself whatever you want. That ass was too sweet. Dad, come back to the showers next Thursday. We'll get it on again. He's like, ah. But then he knows that when he goes to fucking fight, the words too sweet. People are like, too sweet. And then he's just like, I'm going to fuck somebody up right now. That's it. I got all this built-up anger from the shit that happened when I was stuck in the penitentiary. I'm going to fuck somebody up. Call me too sweet again. That's 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 my motivation. Because it brings me back to that time when my asshole was fucking stretched the fuck out. <laughs> I love you so clever lying over here like, yo. Let me show you some tips. Go in there. You fuck him up. Slip the jab. Do this shit. All right? Okay. We gonna kill him. It's good. Pain's good. <laughs> I told you. Don't never come back. Mm. Kick him in the dick. You remember? His dick was out. Remember that shit. Remember? His sword touched yours. <laughs> And look at fucking, fucking this dude over here with the Santa Claus beard and the Jonga pants. He's like, hey, you keep talking about that dick action. <laughs> and then fucking Aladdin comes out the thing in the purple smoke, but it's not Aladdin, it's the Joker. He's like, ha, 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 what you want? And then, um, I don't know, fucking Clubber Lang says, I want to fight Rocky Balboa. <laughs> Whatever. Next. I do. I don't know why this thing is turning purple. Leon Spinks like, what the fuck is going on here? In the prison. Wait a minute. Why is he fighting? What'd that dude do? That's the, Who's he? Two sweets out for revenge. He's fighting this guy, but... That guy didn't do nothing the whole trailer. He just looked like he was sleepy in the corner. No matter what the cost. Jabba Fanakas. Penitentiary 2. They made it seem like I had to build up to that last fight with Leon Spinks. I don't even know if that's Leon Spinks. It might be. I, we, you know, we'll find out when we watch Penitentiary 2. But this movie, man, yo, I'm all about it. So let's get it with Penitentiary 2. Leon Isaac Kennedy. I knew they had to show his name at some point because um, I've been calling him Leon this whole time and fucking up by calling him Jamal Fanaka. But yo, shout out to Leon Isaac Kennedy. He may be too old to put in some movies, but dude. Come on, man. Let's use these guys. Bring them around for an encore. Guys, it's dope. Ernie Hudson, shout out to him. Shout out to Leon Isaac Kennedy. Shout out to Tim Reed, a.k.a. Venus Flytrap. And, yo, that was fucking fun. So we ended up with Lone Wolf McQuaid, Penitentiary 2, two movies that I definitely want to see. We don't need to look at this credit anymore because I remember his name, so let's just bring it back to me, this beautiful face here. But, yo... I had fun. I hope you had fun. It's been the Midnight Hustle, and I'm out. Peace.